Data from China this week may reinforce the view that the Chinese economy is close to, if not at, a bottom. Uh, but the uh, following line it reflects a different story about economic conditions. And John Rutledge is the chief investment strategist for Geneva-based investment firm uh, Safanat. Is that, is, that, is that how you say it? I, I'm never going to get this right. Uh, he's also a CNBC contributor. Of course, our guest host is still That's here, too. Right. Um, so let's... Uh, yeah, let, Safanat let, actually is a word that means an Arabian stallion. An Arabian stallion. I remember seeing that's the movie The Black like. Stallion as a child, but, but that's yeah. about as far as I go. Um, John, your, okay. sense, your sense, are we at a bottom? How far, and if not, how far, far down are we going to go here? Uh, I, think, I, I think the rumors of China's death are exaggerated. Uh, they're probably going to grow 8% for the year. Second half a little slower than the first. Uh, the decline in electricity consumption people worried about is not the real uh, issue there. They had huge increases in infrastructure spending in recent months. Right. So they're, they're, they're going along. They're not as exciting and fast-growing as they were a year ago, but they're not hard-landing either. That's, a, I think, a fiction in the minds of Western investors. John, play this out for me, though. What does it look like, not just this year, but play it out two, three, four years from now, meaning, meaning are, we, are we gonna stay at this type of pace? Is it gonna get better? Is it gonna get worse? And how should we think about that? Uh, I, I think China grows uh, slower and slower over time until it gets to be an adult a uh, high consuming country like the western countries but the fact that they're starting from such a low level means that takes quite a long time they do have some ways of smoothing it out that we don't uh, have but they also have policy that's really a pretty blunt instrument so they're they can make mistakes as well so i wouldn't rule out any mistakes i just think that the big drop earlier this year that everyone was worried about was due to a drop in infrastructure spending from the end of the stimulus program and residential real estate uh, and uh, those drops have uh, happened and have now b bottomed out real estate's actually firming a little uh, state-owned companies are spending on infrastructure with government uh, Got push it. so I, I don't think you're going to get a big drop in growth uh, uh, now I don't think that will help you with the commodities commodities are, are going to be soft right. but uh, uh, China growth is not going to be it. Yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, I do, largely. I mean, perhaps except on the, the commodity point. Um, right. I think that the general story, um, what continues to surprise me is the schism between what economics are looking at, so better data, a sort of a bottoming out, and what the markets are saying, which is uh, still a lot of skepticism, some, a lot of bearish uh, sentiment around right. that. And it might be because of the political uncertainty that not just China, but around the world, we, we continue to face. Do you believe the numbers? I do, to some extent, in the sense that um, they may not be um, sort of Ex sort of explicitly accurate, but I think that the general trend is, is probably right. Um, I do agree right. that I think we'll probably see an eight-handle uh, eight um, print this year, and I think, you know, uh, as was in, uh, expressed a moment ago, I think we will we'll see slower numbers right. uh, over the, the decade, but I think, um, I think that we just got a good run. Just take take John on on the commodity issue. Well, the commodity issue, I mean, this is, it's, it's their input. I mean, if you look at not just the convergence story, but also the um, amount, intensity of use of key commodities, things like copper in particular, coal, um, there's still very, very significant demand coming out of China. And, and by uh, intensity, I mean the unit GDP that they're producing for the input is still rising. They still need more uh, of an input in, to produce one unit of GDP. So I don't see how they continue on an 8% plus, right. which is what, what we think, um, uh, without having these significant drawn on commodities. John, to me that makes a lot of sense. What's the problem? Uh, well, near term, there's an issue that where uh, we have uh, uh, very sharply dropping uh, copper prices, coal prices, and it's because uh, Europe's not buying the stuff. China's changing its mix somewhat, so there's a little more services, a little less heavy manufacturing than there was uh, a while ago. And we've actually just had a recent increase in supply. There's some, uh, there's some coal supply coming on in Australia that's pushing the price down as well. You know, but the question is, for most investors, uh, really two. One is, what's happening in China? The second is, what do investors think is happening in China? I think most of the swings in the prices uh, in the markets are caused by investor ignorance about China rather than actual fundamental changes in China. Even if you do know what's happening in China, how do you make a bet on it? 
Chinese institutions are not ready for prime time. I wouldn't want one of our viewers to go out and buy a stock listed in a Chinese market. I'd rather do that by buying a stock listed in Australia or, or Singapore or right. the U.S. or some other place where there's, a, where there's an English-speaking judge, a long black robe, and an auditor that you can use. Right. <laughs> I'm curious, I don't know if you, there was an article in the New York Times this weekend about manufacturing as part of this iEconomy mm -hmm. series that started actually about Foxconn and, and the cost of workers and things like that. And I wonder, sort of long term, as, as input costs rise, mm -hmm. how long their, their advantage lasts and whether you see manufacturing ultimately either coming back here or to other places and what that ultimately does to this sort of competitive dynamic. So that's obviously the big question around where, the, where things move. Is there going to be this big rebalancing, not just because of labor costs, but also because of energy costs? I mean, we've talked a little bit about right. this already in terms of commodity markets. Um, I think if you look at the migration in, within China to the cities, which is a big part, a big component of, their, um, of the policy and strategy of the government, and, and if you look at the wages um, based on that movement, there, it, there are concerns that mm -hmm. um, we, not, we start seeing wage pressures rising, and therefore it might not be as competitive as it has been So is that before. a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends, I suppose. I mean, you know, the obvious answer would be it depends. I mean, I think that for the perspective of um, a global economy, for the U.S., obviously it, it might be good news because mm -hmm. you've had a decimation of the manufacturing sector. If you can really get the energy um, changes that you hope to, it could be very good news for My the U.S. My iPad must, may co cost more, though. Yeah, it could cost more, absolutely. But it, right. but it also depends where it's being made. I mean, for now it's being made in China, but if the cost structure looks much more attractive in the U.S., who else? Who knows? Right. You might be getting it made here in the U.S. Right. Okay. Can I ask one? Wages are also uh, people's can I, income, John, you know. Can, can I ask you a quick yeah. question just before you go? Yeah. I just get the the, the idea, and, and it's an ideological one, that, that, that China is getting away with central planning and, and and sort of deciding where to invest, and sooner or later. The, the laws of, of Adam Smith and, and economics comes home to roost, and you never really think that's going to happen. Aren't there empty buildings, empty stadiums? Aren't, aren't there infrastructure projects that have never that should have never been done? That that do, do they the, the, peop, the population is growing so quickly? Eventually, it'll just the, the people will fill up in in these buildings and stadiums. Uh, a, a great amount of the infrastructure done has been productivity-oriented infrastructure, in other words, transportation infrastructure and so forth. But, of course, what you say is true. Uh, the way the government there gets a lot of money in the economy is they cram it through the state-owned companies. It shows up in things like new steel mills, and it puts downward pressure on steel prices but it around works. the world. It's not going to so come do, over. Let's do it here, then. Issues. Let's do it. Then let's do infrastructure here. We might as well do but it. But to your... To your to your point, in China, I believe China is in many ways a more market-driven, market-oriented economy than the U.S. economy. I've is heard today. that, but I don't know how you make that case when, when uh, I don't know. It just you go there in a business and see what it's like to run a business in China. The competition in China is much more brutal than it is in the U.S. Really? or Western Europe. And, and by the way, there is, of course, a deadweight loss, which is what you're talking about, yeah. about the system. But it's not like they haven't realized it. I mean, the policymakers, this is precisely what they're focusing yeah. on, the transition phase. And I think to the extent that there is any volatility in, over the next half a decade, it's because of this transition. Well, you know what I, what I just heard from both of you is that if we did try to do all this infrastructure, we'd screw it up because we're not as good <laughs> at, at, at China at actually doing it. So we shouldn't try that here. <laughs> We did a that. A, yeah. a cynical answer would be maybe get the Chinese to do it. <laughs> wow. We did. We, we got them to, yeah. yeah, to build that bridge out in California. We got them to build that bridge out in California. They yep. supplied the steel for the bridge out in California. And everybody was unhappy about that, too. Right. No. Right. No. Right. No. Right. No. Right. Thanks, John.